This year's China Development Forum was held Sunday and Monday in Beijing. In his keynote speech, Chinese Premier Li Chang reiterated that China will spur innovation and growth through investments in high-tech manufacturing and clean energy, and also develop, quote, new quality productive forces. Li also said China will continue to foster a world-class business environment. On Monday, Vice Commerce Minister Guo Tingting expanded on that, saying China will further open up to foreign businesses and investors. Also on Monday, Premier Li Chang met with both the heads of the World Bank and IMF, calling for a closer partnership. And the list of attendees at the forum included top business leaders from countries around the world who are invested in China's growth as a market for their business products and services. CGTN's Dong Shui spoke to some of them to get their take on the importance of China's development. The Chinese government has set an economic growth target at around 5 percent for this year, in line with the market expectations. And the announcement was announced at the annual political gathering of the National People's Congress earlier this March. It signals that the government is likely to inject some stimulus into the economy to boost growth. However, many analysts are forecasting a slower growth. There is even speculations overseas that the number is way too ambitious for China. So is the target way too ambitious? And what kind of opportunities it will bring to foreign investments in China? I'm here at the China Development Forum to hear some of the international heavyweights and what they have to say. Yes, I think the important point here is not the absolute number, but the fact that it is still one of the highest growth rates in the world. During the time, as he said, they are trying to transition the economy. That's very impressive. I'm very respectful of the fact that they have to make this change. What worked for the past 40 years may not be the best way for the next 40. And I think we have to support the government as it thinks through how to change and transition China. China is too big an economy for the world to not be fully engaged with the country. What's more important is all the underlying transformation. How do you manage this 5%? Is it 5%? Uh, of the old China story or is it 5% of the new China story? And the new China story is around industrial modernization, advanced uh, uh, industries, uh, it's about digitization, it's about uh, the green economy, decarbonization. And then this will improve the margins of companies through more added value. This will generate income and this will trigger growth of consumption. And that's, that's a narrative. And, and I, I heard that narrative basically saying the fundamentals are good because this is a big market, there is still urbanization potential, so there's no doubt that the fundamentals are good in the long term, but that transformation is needed, otherwise GDP per capita will stay flat or will grow in a sluggish way. China is very important for the world global economy and there were some news that it could go slow down and I think uh, there's a great direction there, uh, still I think uh, a growth of more than 5%, so Maybe a different type of growth, quality growth, uh, back to uh, more innovations, you know, for us in the energy field it's also important. China is paving the way to uh, the energy transition, you know, in terms of uh, decarbonization technology. That was Dong Shui reporting. And for another company's perspective on the Chinese market, CGTN's Zhang Chenying sat down with Kim Foss Singh, president and CEO of Danfoss, a Danish multinational engineering company. Take a listen. Why we like to be in China is that when we do that, then we can really develop the business. We can partner up with our Chinese partners and develop the business together. So, and as we are coming out of 25 years of continuous strong growth and now have a little bit of a reset where it's, it will be a more high quality growth where, you know, uh, the digital transformation, for example, and the, also the the green transformation will play a big role. That's, uh, that makes China very attractive. China is promoting new quality productive forces. What are some of the opportunities do you see in China's ongoing drive of uh, industry upgrading? And what does your company have to offer along the way? So I, I think um, you know, the, the, the key is that we, we see very big opportunities in, in, a, in a, you know, from a Danfoss perspective in, for example, the focus on continuing the, the digital transformation using digital technology, but also that China focuses a lot 
on decarbonizing, on the green transformation, and and that is something we can really see. So you know, I think half of the capacity that's been invested in renewables in uh, in solar has been invested in China compared to the world. So I think there's a lot of evidence for that. So so as these transformations are quite predictable then uh, then that's very attractive for Danfoss because we can provide the technology and the solutions by by investing in our local innovation centers and our local uh, smart factories and last but not least what's your perspective on China's GDP target of 5% for the year 2024 uh, I, I can say that uh, we, we see a, a positive outlook from Danfoss point of view because of what I just said you know, and the best way we can show that is making the quite significant investments we are doing right now. So last year we opened a big innovation center uh, developing sort of cutting edge technology within compressors in Tianjin in Wujing. Um, we are going to start building the, the second and largest campus we have in China here in April. It will start up for really providing the technology we need here for the future. I'm not an economist to exactly say what are the growth rates going to be, but I can surely say within the area where Danfoss is, these areas driven by digital, driven by, by the um, green transition, uh, we are very optimistic about the growth uh, aspects and outlook. Thanks for your time and insights. Thank you. you. Thank you very much. And for more on the goals of China's Development Forum, I'm so pleased to be joined by Andy Mock. He's a senior research fellow at the Center for China and Globalization. Thanks so much for joining us, sir. I just want to start by asking you, what were China's goals for this forum? Ultimately, what does it hope to achieve? Well, thank you for having me. The China Development Forum is one of the most high-profile events uh, organized by China. So I think it provides a unique platform uh, for sharing uh, what China is accomplishing, what it hopes to accomplish, in particular, with respect to the business world. And here, I think there's a couple of noteworthy messages. I think, first, uh, that uh, China, the government, is attentive to and responsive to the concerns of global business. Um, we saw that with Premier Li Chang's uh, speech, that uh, the government has recognized uh, the challenges in real estate, uh, other aspects of the economy, and articulated ways it's taken to address this to increase uh, inv uh, investor and global business confidence. And I think what is particularly noteworthy is that global business executives are voting with their feet, in particular uh, American uh, executives. Uh, this is the largest contingent of American executives to attend the uh, China Development Forum in a number of years. Uh, there are new attendees, including, uh, I believe, uh, CEO of AMD, uh, food companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies. And I think this is actually in stark contrast uh, to the, government, the U.S. government's position of looking to isolate and suppress China. And what we're actually witnessing is a kind of a state change uh, where, for example, water turns to ice, uh, that we're witnessing a crystallization of the recognition, especially by American business, of just how important the Chinese market is and how important China is as a partner for global growth. Yeah, so as you say, there is this willingness or openness to, you know, sort of listen to what China has to present. And China is seeking more foreign direct investment. But for years, the West has complained on unequal access. So what is it specifically doing to reassure skeptical CEOs? And what areas is Beijing trying to open up? Well, I think uh, China, Beijing is taking measures at various levels. So from a communications perspective, uh, I think the messaging from the most senior levels of Chinese government uh, is very important. I think, second, what is China doing for its economy overall, not just for foreign business executives? And here, I think the measures uh, to transition towards new productive uh, growth forces, uh, addressing some structural issues with real estate, uh, with local government financing, uh, benefit not only foreign business, uh, but uh, Chinese businesses, Chinese consumers as well. And then I think finally, uh, specific targeted measures uh, to uh, make the business environment friendlier and more reassuring for foreign businesses, 
I think include things uh, like uh, measures on cross-border data transfers, which uh, when they were first announced uh, caused concern among foreign business. But as we see, uh, as these uh, measures are being implemented and fine-tuned, uh, that they're becoming, I think, much more amenable uh, to foreign businesses. And this is uh, an important confidence-building measure. Mm. So they One are, of, of several. Sure. So they are sending out this message that, hey, you know, we're open for business, come invest, we have a lot to offer. But there are still also a lot of challenges that exist. For example, IMF Chief Kristalina Georgieva says China faces a, quote, for, fork in the road. But she says with pro-market reforms, exponential Chinese growth is possible, but it must first reconcile pressing near-term challenges, including, quote, you touched on this, transitioning the property sector and reducing local government debt risk. Do you agree with that? Well, with all due respect, I might not agree with this word exponential. So this uh, word ex or this phrase exponential growth is something we typically associate with uh, technology companies that are in the early stages of growth. And I think while China has had a historic world-beating growth for a number of years, uh, for a period of time over 10 percent a year, uh, the bigger one gets, whether that's a company or a country, uh, I think we have to expect that growth will slow down. I think also we have to look at the uh, new considerations uh, facing China. Sustainable growth is very important, not just from an environmental perspective, uh, but just from a purely economic perspective. That the uh, China, I think, has been very good at avoiding some of the excesses uh, that we've seen other major countries suffer from. So uh, I would expect that we uh, would see uh, meaningful growth, and whether that's 5 percent, around 5 percent, uh, in the years to come is perhaps less important than the quality of that growth in terms of environmental sustainability, uh, more sustainable growth drivers. So uh, there was a very famous business book uh, that was called um, What Got You Here Won't Get You There, How Successful People Become Even More Successful. So I think what got China here today uh, is no longer the growth drivers that it can rely on in the future. So I, I'm uh, I'm confident, but I'm not sure we will see uh, this exponential growth. Almost out of town time, but want to ask you very quickly: without more foreign direct investment, how hard would it be for China to achieve its target of five percent GDP this year? Well, I think China's economy has tremendous depth and versatility and resilience. So uh, if in the very unlikely situation that uh, there was a significant curtailment of foreign investment, uh, I think I would still be fairly confident in China's growth prospects. But uh, foreign investment is important, uh, and it also benefits uh, companies making the investments, and it benefits consumers around the world. So it's certainly my hope that we will see uh, greater volume and diversity of foreign investment in China. And that truly is a win-win solution. Yeah, absolutely. China itself has said it will be hard to reach that 5% target. All right. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Andy Mock.